is Pat. I am so sorry I can't be with you this weekend for this reunion. I have so enjoyed our Facebook communication uh, over the past several months, actually, in preparation for this, and I hope it continues. But I had planned to be with you, and I can't, and so I'm sending this message so that you understand and know how much I value our time together at NAU and how much you mean to me and how much you've meant to my career. Uh, first of all, I had, please excuse me for the notes, but I just wrote some notes because I thought it was important to be able to share just a few of the things with you and I didn't want to forget them. Uh, as most of you know, I moved to Boston this summer and accepted a new position at the Boston Conservatory. And in my new role as the Dean and Chief Academic Officer, I have to be here for an event that I didn't know was planned until a couple of weeks ago. And in fact, I didn't know, of course, last year as we were planning this event because I didn't even know I would be here. So here I am, and this is an important event for me to be uh, in attendance. And so I'm sorry I can't be there, but uh, let's hope that we have many, many more reunions and we can get together and, and actually communicate in person. So I wrote some notes that I, I thought might be valuable to you. Uh, I don't know that you know how crucial the years uh, at NAU were to my career. And I feel so fortunate to know each of you as individuals and to hear what you're doing now. And, uh, but more importantly, how we were as a group. And uh, without ever, ever knowing it, you played a huge role in directing my career path uh, and really my life and career paths, and you didn't even know it, and I probably didn't even know it at the time. And the early years at NAU, 1985 to 1992, are really what created the ultimate successes of the NAU band program and the national recognition that we came to enjoy leading up to the performance at the uh, 1989 uh, National Convention of the College Band Directors Association. So. Here are some things that I remember. Your enthusiasm. And I remember, I think it was Jim, and I, I, I can't remember Jim's last name, a, a tenor sax player that said, who thought of walking around on a football field playing music? And I, I looked at him and I said, I thought he would like to know that because he'd really like to get after that person, whoever it was. But he went about what he did with great enthusiasm, and I remember him marching all by himself playing the entire show because he was late to one of the rehearsals. The other thing that, another thing that I uh, remember is your willingness to think outside of the box and to try new things and to suggest new things. I remember Pam, or it, Pam, it may have been you or several other people uh, saying, why are we going on this drum cadence to the other side? Let's have a Dixieland band. And that sort of shaped the entire uh, image of who we were. We had fun uh, doing transitions rather than just going from one place to the next. Uh, you worked hard, but let me also say, I do remember, you partied hard. And uh, for the most part, those two things, work and partying, partying, were in balance for the most part. Uh, and I, I think we re really created something special together. Do you, I don't know if, if the band still uses it today, but the Jaws theme at the kickoff, and we didn't realize, uh, and this, this was Randy Wood's idea, and we didn't realize until we looked around one time, and it was during the kickoff, kick, kickoff, and everyone was doing Jaws, and we couldn't figure out what they were doing. The entire stadium were doing Jaws, and we realized that uh, they had picked up what we were doing, and so that sort of became a tradition. We had to play it from then on, because it looked rather silly for them to sit there doing Jaws without the music. Who can forget the percussion section? I, I think that's all I need to say. And Cardo, I don't know if you're there, or Steve, and Chris, uh, and some of the rest of you, but what an incredible fun, what incredible fun you had, and again, adding to our personality. I remember the saxophones dropping their pants. In a re to reveal incredibly colorful underwear in one of our free fun moments. Uh, I remember, uh, I think it was Dwight Lynn who said that my jaw just about fell uh, to the floor, uh, but we got through it. Tuba antics. Who knew that tubas could become so important to the band besides providing the bass voice? Uh, the transitions from one position to another I already mentioned. And I think 
one of the, the greatest experiences for me was your willingness to work together on and off the field and to grow as musicians and trying to understand the depth of what that meant. And what that did was carry into our performance as an ensemble and as individual artists uh, something very special. Uh, not all of you have gone into the music field, but those of you that have, in our work together as a concert ensemble and, as, and in private study and so forth, uh, it dramatically changed my life and I hope it impacted yours. Uh, and it sounds like it did, sounds like it did as I look at your Facebook comments and so forth. I don't know how we decided that grad assistants and me should all dress alike. I mean, when I look at those pictures, number one, we decided to have a men's suit because my grad assistants were men. I, it looked ridiculous, <laughs> but it felt important at the time that we all look alike uh, in, in performance situations. And uh, I remember a sequined blue top that was fuzzy uh, that we wore, and I'm sure many of you will remember that. And I, I think it's on one of the pictures on the uh, Facebook pages. And I loved my colleagues, Charlie and Pete, particularly. I, I think that you're at the reunion. Uh, both of you are retired now. And what an incredible time we had. And I remember the first office we had where we were all together. And of course, there was no soundproofing. And Pete was teaching trombone and tuba in one office. And Charlie was teaching trumpet in another office. And I was in mine trying to teach conducting. <laughs> and we never got together on what we were doing at the same time. But it somehow worked. Um, our tours, how fun those were, and we were so fortunate to have the funds to do those tours. And really the ultimate experience in the tour, touring, touring experience was our performance at the National Convention in Austin uh, in uh, 1989, 1989. And that was what transformed our image nationally. And I can't thank you enough for that experience for me, and I know for many of you who were involved in that, it was meaningful too, but it, it, uh, for me it was transformational in terms of my career. And Pam, thank you so much for your leadership as a drum major. I love the pictures of the two of us uh, in various scenarios. Uh, two women, baby, we, we, we made it work. Um, and I'm so glad that we caught up uh, on Facebook. What a, what a fun thing that is. I, have, I can't keep up with it all of the time, and I try to, but please know that I, I respond as often as I can, and I love to hear your stories and read what you were doing over the weekend and all of your activities, uh, and your continuing interest in music, uh, and your many special talents. Let me just name a few. Matt, your ability to take a picture of me and draw a little German outfit on it with a beer stein in my hand while playing the accordion was quite uh, artistic. And I'm impressed you should, I don't know if that's part of your career, but it should be part of your career because uh, it's, it was quite amazing. And I have to say, I did uh, give a little chuckle uh, about how you did that. But in any case, I loved it. And Cardo, I love your work with you that, that uh, the vocal group that you have, uh, how exciting that is. And it's so neat to see you doing that. And those who, of you who teach and hearing about your experiences with your own students, I love to hear about that. And uh, it would be fun to even have maybe a Facebook page for those of you who do teach where we can share ideas. And uh, I like to hear you talking about your families and your gigs and the concerts and, the, and, and, your, and your experiences. Um, and I like hearing about where you've uh, ended up living. Several of you live in New England, where I've now moved. And uh, maybe we could have a New England reuni reunion for those of you who are here, even. Uh, but I, I, I've really enjoyed all these things. And I have to say, I got a kick out of you trying to say woot. Now, percussion, I bet you can teach everyone how to say woot. It's not woot. And I'm not even going to try it here on this video because I'll feel quite ridiculous. But there is a way to say woot that's very important that I bet you, uh, Cardo, or some of you can teach everyone how to do that. And I hope you have a recording so that I can hear some of what you do and take a lot of pictures, put them on Facebook, and maybe even, wouldn't it be fun to uh, share a DVD uh, of your experience there back to me. But let's not be this the end of our reunions. 
maybe it doesn't have to be a homecoming uh, to gather. I mean, if we plan another event, let's find a place like Las Vegas or, or Phoenix, uh, a place that's warm wherever where else is cold. And maybe we could have a weekend of performance activity provided by those of you who are still really active at per performers. And let's think outside of the box and try to do something because uh, I feel very connected to all of you and the way my career has evolved as a result of my experiences at NAU. So, have a great weekend, have a great party, and please let's continue to communicate either on Facebook or my personal email. Have a good one.